Connor, Luke, welcome to the Profit Podcast. How are you doing? Good to you. Thanks very much as well. <laughs> There's our first little uh, tripping over each other. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, Connor, you go. <laughs> so as uh, as I just mentioned in the intro, you two uh and I know that there's other people as well involved run the Colony Health and Fitness. So that's what we're going to be diving into today and finding out what that's been like as a journey and what you've learned along the way. There's lots of PTs looking at this, having you now. Um, but before we get into some of that stuff, it's always great to start with a bit of an origin story. Like, how did you guys meet? How did all this come about? You know, if you can give us a brief history of what life was like before the Colony Fitness, then, then give it a go. I want to go. Um, God, how far back do you want to go? <laughs> maybe um, just, maybe so, just when your paths crossed. So, we were both part of Profit First Professional. Um, whenever you joined, was what, five years ago? Five, five years ago. I was doing some of the mentoring at uh, Bolton. Um, when we were both there, um, I can't remember how many people we had at the time. We had probably five or six trainers at the time. Something like that. Um, so Luke came into the gym where we were at. Um, I think he previously hit it off. He loved me from day one. Yeah. I'd locked across the room, all that sort of shit. Um, and then, yeah, over the course of that five years, sort of built the team um, in, in the gym we were at. Ended up with quite a lot more trainers. I think we had like a lot of them at one point. Um, and myself and Luke kind of headed most of that um, had conversations where they needed to be had um, realised that we're probably both very similar and never argue about anything um, <laughs> um, <laughs> and yeah um, decided that as we came to sort of out of Covid and stuff like that that we wanted to start looking at our own place and spend what, the last two years? Yeah, it was we, had, we first had the conversation in the, the lockdown just after Christmas. Um, so it was just a standard Zoom meeting, we had a team meeting, and kind of text me just to say, stay on at the end. Um, and then we just we just said, yeah, let's, let's, let's do it, let's crack on, let's, let's start looking. Um, so that was a, it was an 18 month process. Yeah. Um, it wasn't. Right. It wasn't something. We was very naive and we was like, right. So we'll be open in September. Uh, in September, we still had it even found. I think we only viewed here for the first time in September. So it was nice. Yeah. Just looking and doing the boring bits. But well, here you are. Now it's fully, fully open, fully functioning. Yeah. How long has it actually been open now? Then just to just to give everyone an idea um, of sort of timelines and stuff. This is the end of week nine. Yeah, we opened yeah, on we opened the first of all. Yeah, we've been in the in the actual unit for four months or so, um, just over four months. No, just under four months, sorry. Um, because getting it all set up and getting it out and all that sort of stuff was um eventful. <laughs> um, but yeah, officially been open for about nine weeks. Um, you know, with sort of some existing clients from where we used to be, and a whole pile of new ones. Good, good. I suppose the, the first thing that people want to know is why? Why go for your own facility? What what were you guys looking to get out of it? Was there a specific gap that you were trying to fill or anything like that? You know, you guys are experienced in the industry now. What what was it that you guys wanted to get out of having your own facility? For me, it was just more freedom. Um, I remember having um, a meeting with my form chief when I was 16. And, you know, the... Midway through year 11, time to crack on, Jack. Um, yeah. It was that, and, and I remember she asked me, what, what do you actually want from your future? And something that I said was, I, I, I want my own gym. I want, I want this car and I want my own gym. Um, and I've managed to get both of them in the last two years. So um, when, we, when we was at, the, at the, the other gym, it was it was great for a period of time. And then uh, things happened and... <laughs> we won't go into that, but um, it's just more about freedom and being able to run things the way we want to run things without having our feet tied together. Um, there's just certain things that 
we wanted to do and we was constantly getting told no. Um, so it was, and it was a, we was, we sat down as a team and was constantly baffled as to why because we pull in more clients and we help more. Um, but it was constantly a no. So it was right. Come on, let's let's go do it. Let's go do it ourselves. Yeah, yeah. You similar, Connor? Similar type of thing? Yeah, I think um, partly that. Like, I, I don't think I went into PT thinking I was going to own my own gym when I first started PT. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I went into PT because I was a little fat boy. So I needed my own, need to help myself first. But then I think as we were at the other place and we were doing really well, and like we're helping lots of people, like Luke said, we just constantly got stuck with, we want to try this and it'd be a no or. From our end, we could, do, we could only do as much as we could do, helping people with what we were allowed to do. And we just know all the time. And I know I got to the point where I was like, I know I can do this better. I know I can help people from a gym perspective better. I know we can help people from PT as best as we can. And I was thinking of it from a point of view of how do we make the whole process better for people, not just fit personal training. It could be in a terrible gym and mint PT in there. Whereas if the gym's on board with the PT and the whole process is better, then inevitably people get a better outcome from their sort of health and fitness and gym environment. When I say freedom as well, like, yeah, I mean freedom like within the workplace, but also outside as well. So I remember sitting down with campaign probably 20 um and he basically asked me what I wanted in 10 years time and I hadn't ever thought about it but when I say freedom I also want to be able to take my kids to school when when kids come and I want to be able to pick my kids up and a good way of doing that is by by doing what we're doing and molding all three of our businesses together and so we actually get days off in the week and we get more time to spend at home um Eventually, <laughs> uh, at the minute, but I know that in four or five years' time, uh, I'm going to have more freedom up inside of work, but also outside of work as well. Yeah, yeah, it's about that transition, isn't it? From being because when you when you're a PT, you very much are the business, aren't you? You're the business, and it's going from that to being a business owner. Yeah, and that and and obviously there's still plenty of graft involved in that. We're not going to shy away from that fact, but. It is it is that transition that then can give you that freedom. So that's that's good that, that you've highlighted that's something you want to do. Give us an idea then in terms of the facility you've gone on to open. Um, you know, people people like the details. So like what sort of size did you go for? How did you how did you sort of think about that? Like, did you have were, were you looking for a certain type of thing when you looked for your facility? Just give us a bit of an idea as to some of the some of the sort of the details and the bits that you were specifically looking for when you went to open your own. So the majority of our client base, we came we kind of moved sitting planning it all and working out how we wanted to open somewhere. We came at it from a client point of view and what would we want our clients. Um so we didn't plan the gym based on what like PTs would like, you know, like a million squat racks and you know like what you Every gym you see nowadays has got LED lights everywhere and it's all dark and gloomy and shit like that. Like the majority of our client base are kind of middle-aged people who've got kids that run their own businesses. They don't want to go to like a nice gym. Yeah. They want to go somewhere where it's nice and bright and there's plenty of space and all that sort of stuff and everyone's dead friendly. So we came at it from that point of view first. We looked for places, it was like anywhere between about five and 7,000 square feet, I think we were looking for originally. Yeah. Um, where we found is actually bigger than that. So... It was a bit bigger than we initially looked for, but location-wise, it's right in the town centre. So there's loads of people that walk past every day. Yeah, it's easy to get to. On-site um, on parking. Yeah, we've got parking on site. It meant that because it was a bit bigger, the kind of natural flow of the gym. There's a little reception area, like we're sat in kind of like the cafe area now. We've got our own showers and changing rooms that aren't like you can actually like move out. Um, and then the gym area itself is like, I think it's just over 5,000 square feet, something like that. So it's a decent size and it's all nice and not sort of open. Like there's no, you're not climbing through machines to get to the next one. Like you can actually wander about a bit. And, um, you know, it's, it's not cramped. One thing it's definitely not is, and one thing we definitely didn't want is PT studio. Like, uh, yeah, it would have been probably quarter of the price. Um, and our profit margins probably would have been a lot higher to start with, but 
one thing that I know I wanted was a lot of my clients outside of the, the gym as well. Um, like they didn't know each other two years ago, but um, you know, we, go, we go on walks together, we go on bike rides together, we meet up in a beer or whatever. So let's say for Saturday, for example, we have three classes and what people tend to do is they'll do the first class at nine o'clock and they'll do the last class at 11 o'clock. And that hour in between, they all sit in the cafe and they're all, and you, honestly, you can't get a word in. Uh, you walk in, there's like 15 men and women all sat around each other, just shouting over the top of, each, top of each other. But that's class, and that's it kind of goes in with what we've called it as well. Um, because we're calling it it's a group of, group of things, it's a group of so now we've got a group of people, um, that just absolutely just crack on together. So the, the layout of the gym works perfect for that. Yes, yeah, there's a, like a very big community. It's so much easier for people to come and train because they're not worried about your six foot eight ball bloke grunting in mirrors or yep. your teeny bopper taking a kit off in front of the mirror to take a picture of her ass. Like it's not that kind of place. Um, and it, oh, oh. Uh, it just, it, I think a lot of people, because of our kind of client sort of demographic, it works really well for them. They're not worried when they come in. One can be judging them because they're not wearing the latest gym shop. I what a lot of um when we're doing like show rounds just for people coming in off the street, like the gym itself, like we've got pieces of kit in there worth thousands and thousands of pounds. And they couldn't give a shit about that. They walk past the community wall and they spend more time looking at that than something that's cost thousands. Like we've got um a full wall dedicated to progress pictures, but three quarter of of the photos are us on events. Yeah. Um in the Three Peaks, Up Rivington, Tough Mudders, Santa Dashes, uh, Sports Day. There's, there's all sorts of Piss up. Piss up. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's all sorts of photos on there. And they spend more time looking at that, and we spend more time showing them that now um, because we're getting more sign-ups because they're buying into that and not to the shiny pieces of kit in the actual gym. Yeah, that helps. But yeah, more bothered about buying into the community than dumbbells. Yeah, definitely. And I can imagine that for some people, they don't realise that that's what they want until they see it. They sort of think, oh, I need a gym membership. I should yeah. I should join a gym. And it's only when they see something like that that they think, actually, no, that's what I want. And, yeah. you know, I can, so I, can, I can see how that would work really well in terms of when you show people around. Yeah, there's so many calls that we've had with people um, through our marketing scheme. Um, we've given them a call and we've talked them through what we offer them, we've talked them through the gym. And they, and they've actually gone. Oh, like we spoke, spoke about the community. And they've gone. Oh, you know what? Like, I'd love to get. I'd love to be a part of something. Like genuinely, they've, they've turned around and gone. I'd love to have more friends. I'd love to be able to go to the gym and actually know someone at the gym. Um, and they, they didn't. They didn't know that they needed that. Like you say, thirty seconds earlier. Uh, it's only when you mentioned the community and they go, oh, shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's what's the sort of um structure like in terms of the model you guys run? Is it is it like open gym and PT? Like what? You've mentioned groups um, and classes, yeah, so, or a bit, bit so, of everything. Um, we we kind of don't want anything to be off limits. If that makes sense, like we don't want to be like solely committed to only doing PT or only doing groups. So, like a lot of gyms, the gym itself just does memberships, and everything else is taken care of by other people. We kind of want a bit of everything. So, we predominantly do groups with people. So, like we do small groups of up to six. Um, that's probably. I'd say a good 80% of what we do. Yeah. Um, and most people, when they're signing up here, are going for group training. Um, like we, we do like a little trial offer for a month and get them in. And I think a lot of people don't realize what group training is. They think it's a boot camp. Yeah. Um, I think there's someone screaming and shouting at them from the front and not really paying attention to what they're doing. And then we obviously show them completely different like assessments with them and all that sort of stuff, nutrition, all of the one-to-one -one elements still there but when they're in training they're with five other people um we still do some one-to-one -one stuff but it's not as often um and we do charge a bit more for that because there's only one person yeah um but you know you get the odd person here or there that needs one-to-one -one rather than groups but we tend to try and push people to groups because it's more cost effective for them to get better results generally um we do still have an open gym so we're open yeah. quarter past six to half eight um every, well, most days most, of the week. Most days of the week. So we do still offer it because naturally, like we're aware that it's a PT. Um, when, when 
you can sign up to it. It's, it's, it's a luxury item, so we're not going to get them in on the membership at, at, at bottom line, but then we also get them involved on the Saturday morning classes as well, and, and we kind of tell them it's non-negotiable, like, no, come and get joined in, um, come and get stuck in with us, and, and hopefully as the, as the months roll on, we'll start to see a big conversion rate from people going from just members to actually, no, I, I want to be I want to be a part of that a little bit more as well. Yeah. We want, we want them as part of our community, whether they're just doing a membership or whether they're doing as many sessions a week as they want. Like, we want them to come in and be able to talk to 10 people when they walk in and they meet the person behind the desk at reception with a smile on their face and all that sort of stuff. Like, gyms don't need to be intimidating. Like, we don't want that here. We want everyone to feel like they're part of the gym and, like, we're contributing to them and they're contributing to us. I think what helps with the community side of it as well, in terms of like a business, going back to your question, um, we don't have set clients anymore. Like, so we've now one to ones, they're not my clients. So say I brought over 20 of what were just my clients, you now have a team of PTs, you don't have a PT. Yeah. Um, so they get to know, so we get to know every single person by name. We know what the kids are called, we, we know that they've got <laughs> relationship troubles, we know everything about, but we know them all on a, on a personal basis as well, rather than just, oh, Connor's in with, with with Penny, morning Penny. It's like, oh, hi, Penny, how was that like that gig that you went to at the weekend or or whatever, like, because I've trained in the week as well, so. Yeah, that's class. People crave that, don't they? People really do sort of buy into that when even, you know, even just knowing a little bit about them is huge, but to the level that you guys know them, and every single one of you knowing them, that's huge. You can see why people will flock back for that. People don't talk enough. <laughs> no. Uh, they don't. Uh, you, you walk around most gyms now. So I've, got, I've got a gym membership somewhere else um, back, at, back in Warrington where I live. And no one talks to each other. It's, yeah. it's, I walk in and I find it fucking bizarre. No one talks to each other. Um, and then you come in here and then we're shouting over the top of people, telling people to stop talking and crack on. Like, People like, do show rounds in him and it must be so weird for people coming from your mainstream gyms to to here because uh, everyone's sitting around chatting, then they crack on for a little bit, then they're standing around chatting again, and it but it works. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose it's it's that realization, isn't it, that because we know this from experience from PT and stuff, it's not all about just getting people to work hard, is it? You've got to get people no. to buy into the whole thing and if you can find ways to make it comfortable so that people want to come back, they're going to inevitably do better, aren't they? Um, I think the hard work bit, in a way, doesn't matter as much as I used to think it did. Yeah. It's like you could absolutely destroy yourself. Like, we all know, you could kill yourself for five sessions in a week. But then if you don't do it consistently, you ain't going to get very far anyway. But the thing, the community side of things that we've managed to build over the years that keeps people coming consistently for weeks and weeks and months and years on end so that they, they end up getting better results and it becomes part of their weekly habits, like brushing their teeth. They go like, oh, what are we doing today? Like, oh, it's Monday. I go to the gym on Monday. And they know when they come in that their mates are going to be there, that they'll probably get a bit of stick if they've been on holiday someone giving, giving them shit for being a part-timer or something like that. But it makes the gym experience more fun. Don't get me wrong, like you'll have some of our clients and some of them will crawl out of a session, but that'll be uh, that's not every single session. Yeah, like, we, fi we finish with, with every, we finish every session with a bit of, bit of a hit, bit of a circuit, bit of a, bit of a blowout. Um, but it means that they can come in again tomorrow or Wednesday uh, and and you can come two, three, four times a week rather than I think, yeah, I think the, I think the culture these days is because of Instagram, I'll be honest. And it looks really cool from a PT's point of view, videoing it, and they're absolutely annihilating someone. And what, but what we don't tell the rest of our Instagram followers is that that person hasn't come into the gym now for the rest of the week because they text them the day after going, "Fucking hell, mate! What a session! Can't move, won't be able to move all week." Well, that's not going to get your fucking results, is it? Yeah. Like going to the gym once or twice a week because you've been absolutely pummeled. Like, we'll we'll make you work hard, um, but. You can come to the gym three times a week, four times a week, and you'll get better results anyway. Yeah, yeah. And then when you think about the other side that you guys have nailed, like you mentioned earlier, Luke, about when you're on the phone with people, they mention like wanting friends and stuff. If someone is suddenly feeling happier, 
because they've got more connection now with people and they feel more comfortable in themselves. And they've also started surrounding themselves with people that are more aligned to the type of life they want to live. They're going to start making better choices outside of the gym, I think. I think because they're happier just in general. You make you make good decisions when you feel good, don't you? And if they, yes. if they then suddenly, let's say they're socialising with people at the minute that aren't what they want to be and you've now give them a, a new group of people, they can still go and socialise and do those things, still have a drink and have a laugh like we've sort of talked about, but it's a different thing now, isn't it? Entirely. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it serves a different purpose. Yeah, there's, there's an example literally yesterday. Uh, I won't mention names, but he, he come into the gym yesterday and he went, I've done it. I was like, you've done what? He's like, kicked her out. I was like, shit, what, what do you mean? You kicked her out. He's like, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely buzzing. I've kicked her out. But like 12 months ago, when he, before he started training, like, he was just stuck in a set boring rut of, Going to work, going home to his unhappy missus, and but but now he's got this brand new confidence. And I'm not going to say we tell people to finish the finish the wives and ruin families, but but if he's gaining gaining confidence, he's got a new social group, and he does he's not going to he doesn't feel he doesn't feel threatened that he's going to be lonely by kicking his missus out because he's got this community. He comes in here twice a week. He, he's booked onto the Christmas do now. He, do you know what I mean? Um, I'm not. I'm not advocating kicking your misses out, but but just a, just a little example of what, you, of what you just said, where people are gaining confidence outside of the gym yeah. by just just having a stronger community inside the gym. And then if we if we look at the actual process of because like where where you guys are now to people listening to this is obviously going to sound absolutely awesome. Um, and it is, but I can imagine that to get to this point, it's been a really sort of bumpy ride along the way. I can imagine there's all sorts of turmoil that comes with doing what you guys have done. So if we start to look at the actual process of opening something like what you guys have done, like, I, I mean, I don't even know where you want to start with this, but what's that like? What what are the What were the biggest sort of fuck ups along the way what were the biggest lessons learned or the bits that you didn't even see come in <laughs> um the very first thing that, that i'd recommend to people one thing that we done uh we reached out to other people that we knew um who've also done the same thing and just gone and pit their brain so uh, i know you had them on the other week johnny and jamie at yeah. the strength collective um we went and we went down and met them and seen their gym when it was just an empty shell um and there was just dust everywhere and piles of bricks. Um, but we went and, because they hadn't even opened yet, but we went and picked their brains about all the admin side of it and all the... Um, um, yeah. Where, we were very... <laughs> £1,000 to play music. A thousand pounds to yeah. play music. <laughs> okay, so we were just talking then about what it's like to actually open it and some of the mess ups and that that you made along the way. So what what's that been like then? What were some of the things that you went and found out from elsewhere? So uh, like Lou was saying, we went and spoke to Johnny and Jamie. We were looking at stuff like like rent and trying to get as much information as we could before we actually had to sign anything. Um, this was before we even had finance, to be fair. Um, like, we didn't know where we were going to get the money from. Um, we weren't 100% sure on even how to raise the money that we even thought we would need. Um, and to be fair, I don't think we actually knew 100%. We kind of winged some of it and just went, it might be this much. Like, Google's helpful at times. But then at other times, what we've put down on or what we found and then what's been actually real are completely different. Like Luke was saying, it's a grand a year to play music. Yeah. Like I, I thought it was like 11 quid from what I found on like Google, something like that. When I got my bill, I was like, fuck me. Um, well, Johnny and Jamie said, if in doubt, it's a grand. <laughs> Everything's a grand. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything's more. Yeah, so like even like the building work, like, we did that we'd got a quote for all the building work and like 
we've had to like build all our own say we we paid a builder to do all the showers and all that sort of stuff and we went over budget after probably two weeks of that it was over budget already um stuff like kit like we bought what what we thought we needed and then stuff arrives and you go oh shit we've not got anything to put plates on like it's so easy to miss stuff. you just go like um right so we're gonna need some of those and like i said everything ends up being at least a grand um but i think some of the stuff that did help us out a lot we were very fortunate that we've got a lot of clients who run their own businesses and stuff like that and we reached out to a lot of people who we know who run businesses that have been very successful and asked to pick their brains. So like I sat down with a few of my clients and went through the numbers with them and went, look, can you see anything that we might miss and run some stuff by them and go, how's this? How's that? And they'll go, mm, have you thought about this? And some of them were clients as well. So we're pretty honest with us. Um, some of them would go, I don't think that's great. Actually, I wouldn't like that if it was me. So we adapted the model or we might have adapted um well, that's the shit you need. That's the, that's the, that's the shit you need. tell the truth not not people that are going to say fucking hell you open your own gym buzzing right oh, membership well like you need people who are actually going to pick it apart um yeah. and, and almost critique it before it's even happened because uh, if, if, you, if you've got a load of answers for them on the back of it um it builds confidence and then when other people are going to ask if, if they're thinking it, other people are going to ask it, and you've got more more answers and more solutions. Yeah, yeah. and you've got people you can keep bouncing the ideas off when you've gone back <laughs> and revised them as well and gone, actually, yeah, shit, we've, we found this out instead, or we might think about doing it this way. And you've got three or four different opinions and of people who run businesses from either the industry you're in or other industries. Like one of the people who I sat down with a lot was one of my clients, one's a dentist around the corner. He's Dentist is super successful. Slightly, obviously, very different industry. I don't know shit about teeth, but his level of service at that practice is unreal. So we've stole some bits of that and gone. How do we do that? Yeah. yeah. I think advice for me. Oh, or thinking about opening a gym, or is in the process of opening a gym. Time frames and stuff like that. Um, always low, always lowball them, because <laughs> like, for example. We got told from a builder that it's going to take X amount of weeks. Well, it wasn't. It was four weeks longer. Um, things like um, be careful using your friends. I'm, I, I'm not going to make it out to be um, a, a, a horrible process setting up, but we used a couple of friends or I used one of my friends to, um, for like things like signage and, and uh, laminate flooring and stuff like that. And they just, they just people, people will let you down. Um, and the, the kit providers that we've used, um, they've missed every single deadline for um, dropping kit off. And just, just whatever you're thinking could happen, probably will happen. Um, so have contingencies. That's that's the main bit of advice I would say. If it's kind of overestimate absolutely everything. Yeah, yeah. If you overestimate it by 20 um as another 10. <laughs> yeah. And then at least, you're not going to be as disappointed. But I think off the back of that as well, like some of the stuff that has gone wrong whilst we've been setting up, I think individually all of us have got some bit while we're setting up. But having sort of the team around you to go, right, you need to go and just sit in the corner over there and, go, and other people to pick up some bits of slack. It's massive as well. If you're going into business with other people as well, make sure you're going into the business with the right people. Uh, one thing that us three are very good at is having very direct conversations with each other. Because um, if you're going home and you're bitching, say I'm going home and bitching to my missus about Connor, that's not healthy for me. It's not healthy for Connor. It's not healthy for the business. Um, like you need to go into business with a business partner if you're going in with, with a partner where you can nip it in the bud straight away. Yeah. Um, and just be like, like, right, look, I'm not happy with this. We need to resolve it. I think it's this way. You think it's that way. We need to meet in the middle somewhere. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that you mentioned there as part of this setup process, and I know it's a, it's a big question we get a lot when people ask about opening facilities and stuff like that, and 
obviously only share what you're comfortable sharing, but I just wanted to ask, how did you guys go about solving the problem of financing such a big project like this? I know there's different ways of doing it. Um, how did you guys go about solving that problem and, and finding ways of doing that? Because I know everyone has to get creative. We were very fortunate and still are very fortunate that almost all of the finance came from clients. Right. Um, so through the years of working with them, you kind of a bit like the community side of things that we're trying to build here, the community clients that we built over the years where we've ended up training their partners, their friends, their sons and daughters, all that sort of stuff. You end up with, you know, we might just be the, the, the freaks that have ended up with sort of some clients who are in a position where they can help us out. Um, but almost all of the money has come from clients, which has been great. Obviously, we've put some of our own in and we've had to get some loans and stuff, but it's not been as much. Yeah. Um, but the fact that people have kind of backed us has been great. Um, and it also means that we've been able to, like I said, lean on some of them a bit to get a bit of support from them with some of the other areas, whether it's in systems or, you know, I'm not sure how to do this. And they'll go, oh, I've got that. And they'll just send it. Um so we have been really fortunate with that. Obviously, yeah, you have to get a bit creative with some bits and go, shit, we need to find X amount. Like, where are we going to find that? And some days were great where I remember, <laughs> remember where one of the days when we were at the other gym, we were quite away from finding the rest of the finance that we need. And after a conversation with the client, I'd been at his house training in there, come back, told him, and we were like, shit, like, we're there. Like, we can do it. Like, because up to that point, it had been more or less an idea for a while. Um, and we'd found where we wanted to go more or less by that point. And then I think, I think, yeah, I think Connor's been quite modest in saying that we got lucky. I think you you create your own luck by building relationships with people. Um, and with, with one of mine, I, I just, I trained him and I just asked for five minutes of his time at the end. Uh, he says, yeah, sure. So we went downstairs, sat in the cafe. I said, look, I said, this is, you know, that I want to open my own gym. I said, we are X amount shy of where we need to be to properly get the ball rolling. Um, would you mind giving us a loan? It literally just because because we had that relationship. Um, and he turned around and said, absolutely, you can have it in cash and I don't want any interest on it. <laughs> like, yeah, some some people turn around and was like, yeah, we've given all, all of us, um, they've got interest on theirs and, uh, and stuff like that. But, like, like one of the clients, he's not cash struck. Um, so in that sense, we've not got lucky, but he's still giving us money um, because he loves us. He loves what we do. Uh, he loves how he feels on the back of it. And he loves the idea of what we wanted to build. Um, and he actually said to me, well, if you need some money, um, I'll go into my savings and I'll, and I'll sort you out. I was like, shit. Like, yeah, yeah. Like you say, it's all about them relationships, isn't it? And people, I suppose as well, like if you put yourself in your client's shoes, like if you if you had the chance to sort of take that thing that you're already really enjoying and, and, and help them do it even better and still be a part of it and feel even more part of it, you'd definitely invest in it, wouldn't you? You'd definitely get involved. So that same guy that I'm talking about, before we'd even opened, we only had like little bits of like we only had bits of the floor and uh, little bits of kit dotted around, whatever. And I got him to come down and have a look, and he walked around, puff, puffed his check, chest up, uh, and bounced around the place, and was like, "Oh, so is that what I thought? Oh, is that what I thought?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, but like, they are the, the part of the bricks and the mortar of this place. Like without them, we wouldn't be able to do it, and we. Oh, I'm not going to talk on behalf of Jake and Connor, but I constantly remind them that without them, this wouldn't be possible. Yeah. Um, I don't need to. I don't need to shine the shoes for him and and fucking wipe the floor. Constantly, like, look, like I am super pleased for what you've done. Without you, I won't have this. Simple as that. Um, and the big smile on their face, and I can't get back to you, fucking prowler. <laughs> 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 snap back to reality yeah. <laughs> yeah. so what what are the uh you know looking ahead now then now that you i know you're still very very early days but you know what what are the goals for you guys down at, at the colony what 
is it is it a case of like just just get the place full get it busy like what sort of what sort of things have you got set out because no knowing you guys i can imagine there's a you know there's certain plans and targets and things that you're looking to hit like where where does this go for you guys so i i live in warrington so we're 20 three mile away from from bolton where we are i've traveled it five six times a week every week for the past five years um, so in five years, uh, once all the loans are paid off, um, once we start some re really pulling some cash, um, then yeah, we want we want a colony version two. Uh, I think this will always be always be the HQ, but um, we're going a little bit closer to home, if not if not back home, um, because it, that on the and stuff like that, a lot of them they are from not just from Bolton. And so we do reach out and we get referrals from, I, we had a, had a referral the other week from someone from Bolton because the cousin lived in Bolton. Um, so that's a long, long term goal of the place. But yeah, for now, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's get this place as, as busy as possible. We've got, target. Um, we've got financial targets for this place before any of that can even be, um, be planned out. But um, for now, just Keep enjoying this and just be grateful for what you've got. I think too many people can open, opening, and after a month, when they picked up 50 new clients in a month, think, fucking hell, we're going to be absolutely minted, we're going to be millionaires. And like, just just appreciate the here and the now rather than always, it's good to have goals rather than always thinking, what's next? Just sometimes just sit down, just go, uh, what about now? Yeah. I think some of it's like, for me as well, like goal wise, it's not just financial or tangible stuff so like one of the things that i'm super happy about is almost every person that's come like we've not had a single complaint yet which has been great like don't be wrong like we're not perfect we never get anything right. but in the three months that we've been here there's probably 10 15 gyms within five minutes of here um and I, i'm always checking like where we're at on google and all that sort of shit like there's a gym literally across the road so like that really They've been open years and within a really short space of time, like the reviews that we're getting from clients, the feedback that we're getting from people, that kind of the reputation that we're getting is mega. Like there's people tagging each other in shit on Facebook and Instagram and people leaving us Google reviews, actual conversations we have with clients and stuff like that when they're in and the results that we're getting with people within class. Like they're not necessarily tangible for us but just the fact that we're making an impact is the people who we've already got and that people are coming in and going actually it's really nice in here and they're enjoying coming in and training and enjoying being part of our community it's massive yeah because without that stuff you won't get any of the other stuff will you so it's all well and good measuring the tangible bits but without those intangible bits that you can't always see on a spreadsheet you'll get nowhere <laughs> yeah. so yeah that's the most well, important if stuff. we get to the point where people just go that's the gym you want to go to in bulk or, you know, being part of the community. Getting great results. And there's loads of little dungeon gyms around here that you just sat in a dark room somewhere. I mean, all of them. But that's great for them, but that's yeah, not what we're trying to do. That's not what we're trying to do. There's, there's not, there always needs to be one of us. That I can see. The amount of times we've been asked is, um, oh, are, are you not are you not a bit worried that you've opened directly opposite a CrossFit gym? Like, not at all, because I'm and and they've got signs on uh, outside saying they've won uh, gym of the year for the last two years on 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 the drop, <laughs> which is great for them. But we're not trying to build a CrossFit gym. We're we're trying to build our own colony. We're trying to build our own community. We're trying to build something that's completely unique. Um, we're not really worried so, about what we're going to do. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, I think we're quite lucky in that because because of where we all got our apprenticeships in the world of fitness, we've been we've been raised with this sort of abundant mindset, haven't we? There's enough space in the industry for everyone to do well if you're doing a good job. Still a lot of PTs out there that are very sort of scarcity mindset and think that, oh, there's not going to be enough people I mean, take a look around, take a look around your local town centre. There's plenty of people that need help with health and fitness. 
the, they just need the right place to go and do it, don't they? And if you build that and, and get it out there, then people will come, you know? So I think one, of, one, of the, one of the best bits of I ever got, this was before I even joined ProFit um, and just doing fitness instructing. And I was thinking about uh, doing little bits and bobs of uh, freelance. And my old boss said to me that personal trainer is, it's two separate things. Like it's 50% personal and it's 50% trainer. Um, and and I'd like to think if you walked into this gym, you'd walked in and you go like, this place has got bags of fucking personality. It's yeah. not always just about the, the training. Um, the, the whole place that every, like every member of staff, um, like all those trainers, uh, like everyone's got bags of personality. There's no robot stood in front of a mirror looking at his biceps as he uh, as he's going. Like it, that's like I said, that's great for for other gyms and. And good luck to him, but that's not what what we're trying to build. Yeah, yeah. And I've got one last question to finish off with. This ties in nicely with the common theme throughout today's conversation of community. One of your one of your members submitted a question that they wanted me to ask you. So um, I hope she doesn't mind me naming her. Laura uh, said, "This is to to Luke and Connor. What do you buzz off the most when you're training your clients?" Somebody asked Jake. <laughs> oh, um, Jake would definitely say Laura. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, him, him, and him and Laura. So Laura is one of Jake's clients um, from from yeah. from the previous gym, um, and Jake loves Laura just as much as Laura. Laura loves Jake. Uh, they absolutely bounce off each, bounce off each other. Um, but yeah, so, I, think, what we I think for me, it's like people. Like we said, most of the way through, people are coming having a good time. People are actually enjoying being here. Like that one, the just results said. and stuff are great. Like, and yeah, you know, if you don't get results as a PT, as a gym, as a online trainer, whatever, people aren't going to come for very long. But that's, I think, that's partly why, well, part of the reason why I wanted to open my own places because gym. I don't think gyms actually help people do that. It's the trainers and the people inside them that do. Just yeah. providing a facility doesn't do shit. It's like having a mechanic and just handing you the tools and go, well, we'll go on then. Yeah. Like, don't do shit. But people coming in, having a good time, getting some good results. And even when they're not having someone to kind of go, right, well, let's work on how to fix it and go actually it's so great that you get better results a week. So let's work out how we get you there. Uh, I think uh, another exa- an example of what I buzz off is um, literally that session that I just finished 40 minutes ago. Um, there's a girl she won't mind, there's a girl called Hannah who we've only been training for six weeks um, she told us that uh, she's just got the um, approval on the um, adoption on the adoption of a new boy um, and she brought a little uh, cut out laminate cut out of his face and like, I had to wear it for the full hour um, but like, but like, she, like uh, that's a brand new client like, she's coming for six weeks um, and we've just had a big group photo at the end with with this child's face on, on, on my head. But like the fact that she's got the confidence in us, but also in the gym, um, to come and, and, and bring that and ask me to wear it and absolutely buzz off it. Yeah. Yeah. And if there's no prizes, no prizes for guessing for one of the first places she's gonna bring that child, is there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, she's, she's been here six weeks and she's referred as long as you don't scream. Yeah, definitely. Like, having a good time, you know, she's telling everyone about it. After her coming in, she referred one of her friends within two weeks who signed up with us, a cousin. And then off the back of that, we've had another couple of referrals. So, like, it's not necessarily PT related. It's done as a world of good just for people coming in, having a laugh, and don't want to go then. They're not spending 20 minutes talking to us. You can't get fuck all of it. <laughs> Well, gents, it's been a it's been a, an absolute pleasure hearing that story today. I, I think that at some point we're going to have to definitely get you back on and maybe do like a a one year anniversary or something and get a get an we'll, update. We'll do. We'll, def- we'll definitely have Jake and it'll be full of um um um. <laughs> I'll, I'll be great at all. Well, <laughs> we'll be glad we've got an editor then for that one. <laughs> Jake, Jake loves the camera, but uh, the camera doesn't love him. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, just just before we uh, just before we finish off, tell anyone that's listening now that either you know wants to wants to follow you online or even come down and see the facility. 
let everyone know where they can come and find you and, and get involved if they, if they want to be part of it? Um, so Instagram's at the Colony Health and Fitness. Um, the Colony Health Fitness, sorry. Um, we're right in Bolton Town Centre. Um, anyone who's from Bolton, it used to be a furniture shop called Gregory and Porritt. Um, but we're literally slap bang in the town centre. It's dead easy to get to. Yeah. Um, every social media I think you can yeah, find. Facebook. Instagram, um, Google, Instagram. a lot. Excellent. Well, thank you for coming on today, boys. It's been an absolute pleasure. Hello, and welcome back to the Profit Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Matt Robinson. I am doing an interview today um, in solo form. It's just myself, but I've got two fantastic guests on um, that I've worked with before, Paul's worked with before. We were all part of the Profit team, worked with some of these guys for a long time. And just like quite a few of our members, um, a few of our colleagues, they've gone on to open their own facility. So today we are joined by Connor and Luke from the Colony Health and Fitness, and they're going to share with us what it is that they've gone on to build, what their model looks like, what they had to do to actually get this gym up and running and off the ground, why they started it in the first place. Um, and there's just some amazing little insights into in there into what these guys have done. And I'm pretty certain that by the time you finish this episode, you'll understand what it takes to make this type of thing work really well. These guys are doing some very, very good work in a nice simple way that means that 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 business is going to grow i'm predicting very quickly and be very very successful so grab grab a pen and paper if you want to make any notes about opening a gym make sure you listen in and make sure that you go and have a look at what these guys are doing find them on socials i'll have tagged them in stuff make sure that you give them a follow and get down there and go and see this facility if you're interested in this type of stuff without further ado Here's the in, here's the interview.